are some of my favorite espers at R6? Now, I've been playing for quite a, a long time, and I'm going to have a video actually talking about how long I've played, so definitely keep an eye out for that. But I wanted to jump into this video actually getting into units that I feel like actually are really good at R6. Some I have and some I really want, but we're just going to go ahead and dive right into it. I feel like T at R6 is just kind of nuts for what she does. The thing that I like about her the most is that she actually is giving you value with every single rezo you get just about, right? So we actually look at her rezos. The very first one gives her the Nightbringer AP absorption change to 30%, which is massive. Then you go to R2, then you get the Nightbringer upon successfully absorbing AP. She grants all allies AP plus 10%, which is just like, okay, now we're actually giving more to the party. So she's not only this control esper that's able to manipulate a AP or stun, but she also is allowing your team to be able to freely move, which is not only only beneficial i mean it's definitely more primarily more beneficial in pvp but this also is honestly within its own right just as beneficial in pve content which is another reason why i feel like she's absolutely a unit I, that I, I just absolutely love at r6 of course base stat increase but then Hates the action. If there's any ability on cooldown, she gets an additional speed of 20, which again, speed is kind of her thing. You're going to be having a crap ton of speed on her. And so knowing that when you're using abilities that you then get 20 per, uh, plus additional speed is going to honestly make or break what your T can do up against, like, say, another T or up against another speed lead, which is like really nice that that's embedded in her kit. You get base that increase again. And then, of course, the R6 is the big one where Devouring Void absorbs AP is changed into inflicting a minus 30% to targets and granting plus 30% to all allies. This is a definitely like a super, a super, super impactful uh, R6. And the main thing about this for those of you guys that don't know, instead of it absorbing it and redistributing it, it just gives your team 30% and takes away 30% from the opposing side. Getting more value at that point and how much AP you're able to actually push. And that's why I would say for a lot of you guys that want to use T competitively, that is going to be a huge factor into making her work at her best um, is, of course, making sure that she has this R6. Now, of course, this is not even including any of the other attributes or elements within her kit, being able to strip buffs, all that other crap that she gets. But I definitely will say within her rezos within themselves, they also like they just allow her to do a lot on the field, right? Like just absolutely a lot. I definitely have to mention another Esper here. He's actually fairly newer and some of you guys might have just missed him, but I got to throw him in here. I have him R6 on my test server account, but function. OK, um, he's insane. <laughs> he's insane okay he absolutely makes no sense like so the dude already has like a stat kit right like he already does a lot um the marsh wind effect is absolutely great on him um and that basically and let me see if i can actually pull it up here um so the marsh wind so when allies uh deal damage they restore hp um and this is a unremovable gold buff so heaven's will marsh wind far journey these are all things that he's able to either help assist with or take advantage of so when allies deal damage with basic abilities inflict damage um additional damage equal to 2% of the target's max HP and 100% of the carrier's attack. You got the Heaven's Will, uh, which is going to uh, basically, uh, the carrier gains random bonuses for uh, two turns. Um, and then with that, when casting abilities, if the ability is a basic ability, Fushi gains one stack of Far Journey. And that Far Journey is going to allow him to be able to cast Pursuit Attacks with the Dragonic Roar, which is the S1, which is, again, pretty powerful. Then he's also able to mitigate Stun and Sleep with this ability. And then the random bonus that you actually gaining from heaven's will is attack up speed up and crit damage up so this guy is giving you a lot right now when you start looking at his rezos right the dude kind of kind of gets crazy because the r1 for most damage dealers for to you know to be fair they always get final damage so i'm not gonna say and act like that's not normal but as soon as you get him to r2 the random bonus effects then become all applied right so they get all of the random bonus effects which means they get that attack up speed up and crit damage up now but then to give him even more they give him a 25 percent all allies ap push which is just kind of nuts because that makes him like supreme like buffing and ap pushing at the same time some of the strongest ap pushers in the game obviously not as opst but considering all the things that he does 
some of the strongest AP pushers, when you're looking at like Clara, she's healing, granting immunity, and then giving a 25%. He's doing this on his R2, and he's not even a Nate AP pusher, which is just kind of insane once you get the R2. Once you get to uh, R4, uh, when this Esper is not attacking on their own turn, he gets a damage increase of 15%. Going into his kit with the pursuit attacks, which again, having things that coincide to make the character work better always just makes more sense. Um, and then the very last one, the one harmony, if this ability is not on cooldown at the start of Function's turn, dispels all his debuffs and grants him shield for two turns and the shield strength is 80% max HP. The thing about him being at like, for example, this state, this kind of sort of makes him like Leon right like that's <laughs> like she grants that but shield and she's a support right so the fact that a dps single-handedly can do or sorry a support dps can single-handedly do all of this and it's kind of weird because even the categorizing of characters in this game is not as like traditional as some other games and the thing is is that with what he's able to do the dude is just he's he's disgusting he's an absolute monster and that's one of the things that i really do like about what he brings value wise is like his kit already does so much but then his rezzles give him like that little extra that really make him really really good for anyone's account um and considering he's a wind tune i thought that he absolutely deserved this type of love so i gotta say he's in my top five easily um now that's going to be number four three i gotta put her in here hilda <laughs> <laughs> Hilda, man, man, man. Now, Hilda changes the game for sleep for those of you guys that don't know. I would argue that this is a unit you absolutely want to get to R6 like a thousand percent like she's she's definitely going to be one of those units um and the reason why that is is because for one right like i said she changes the game for sleep so basically when she has this deep sleep effect on and inflicts sleep for one turn and then uh, also poisons for two turn at the start of the enemy's turn so before a enemy is even able to go if this is already activated it basically is going to make it to where the enemy is going to be put to sleep and that means that they don't get to go Right. And then because she's inflicted already at this point, poisons on them because of what the skill does, then they're taking that poison damage basically right off rip. And it's HP percent base damage. Right. Which is, again, nuts. And so when you're then looking at her rezos, OK, this is why Hilda is so annoying. So at R2, Dream Interrupted, when an enemy receives poison, Hilda inflicts another poison on them for one turn, and this triggers once per target per turn. So this is obviously an amazing ability. It makes her the best poisoner for things like Andres, for example, and just the best poisoner in the game. So she basically gets what Kara gets, um, essentially just on drugs, because her kit already does like a debuff extension, and then she has poison extension. So keep in mind, those are two different things. Poison extension is specifically to poison, and then debuff extension is to any debuff. The fact that she has both of those in her kit is kind of nuts. Then when you get to uh, the R4, 20% chance of ignoring resist when attacking. Now, the important thing about that is that that makes it much easier for you to land your sleeps. It makes it much easier for you to land your poisons, um, to debuff extend. Like it, it just gives her so much more value for debuffing, right? And then to top it all off, I think she arguably has one of the most annoying R6s in the game. Um, and honestly, this would then thus make it one of the best R6s in the game when you're talking about a debuffer. This is basically going to give her a new effect for Dream Interrupted. She gains deep sleep for one turn at the start of combat. So initially, you have to use your S3 in order to proc the deep sleep, which then puts your opponents to sleep. But at R6, she automatically starts the entire fight with it. And then for one turn, they are under that sleep effect. But what happens is, is that when she then uses her S3, it basically will reapply the deep sleep which then thus in turn extends the effect of the deep sleep and could again put the enemies back to sleep. The thing is, is that while under the effects of deep sleep, enemy sleep won't be removed by damage. So this is another thing that makes it quite annoying is that this then becomes a overall team effect. So when you have that overall team effect, now you're talking about there's actually a uh, level of utility that she's bringing to the party. So now you're not interrupting the sleep anymore, which makes it very, very powerful when you're talking about now you can nuke them and work them down and they can't do anything about it. And this is why R6 Hilda 
arguably can be one of the most broken units in PvP. That's why you'll still see people using units like Hyde or Queen Mother because you need someone to be able to mitigate this kind of effect because the fact that it's able to take effect on your entire party it's just nuts, right? Like, it's just so nuts. I, I don't know what Lilith was thinking when they cooked her up. Now, obviously, you can't use this in every single scenario. Like, if sleep, for example, is mitigated or somewhere like that. Again, against cleansers, there's definitely a lot that you can do to mitigate it. But for what it's worth, it is still an extremely powerful, 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 uh, you know, R6 and I feel like all of her resos kind of coincide and just make sense into what her kit does, which is really good, right? I feel like that's kind of the entire basis of why these units kind of fall into that scale or that spectrum of um, some espers that I just absolutely like love at this point. Now, number two is actually quite interesting for me because this is a esper that, how can I put it? Like, you kind of sort of like, you kind of don't need it. <laughs> but it's nice to have, I guess. Like, and, and honestly, let me see. We're, we're going to change it up, actually. You know what? I'm changing I'm changing this one because now I'm thinking about it, this is a great Esper for, um, for whatchamacallit, for R2-ing, but I don't think his R6 is necessary, so I'm going to change it. We're, we're doing a quick veto real quick. I'm going to actually go with Jin Cho. Now, I don't have him R6 on this account, but I would love to have him R6. Um, and arguably, I think for my test server account, I do. Now, let's talk about what exactly Jin Cho is able to do. Now, Jin Cho, okay, is going to be one of the premier. He was a freebie unit. He got buffed. Um, they gave him um, primarily because of CN server. And then with where what we're looking at for what he's used for, I mean, dude's good in PvP. He can work in Andres. He's actually meta in Andres. Um, dude has a lot of utility right now. Now, the thing is, is that what he's able to do and let's actually start off with his base kit, right? You have the Punish Evil effect, right? And let's actually go to, do, 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 oh, go back. Uh, Punish Evil, which is a base attack plus 100% and base defense plus 100%. And then the uh, Intimidate, which is dealing damage, recovers HP, healing is 20% of the damage and gains shield before receiving ability-based attacks. Shield is 30% of max HP. Now, what you're basically getting is when you gain that Punish Evil and your HP is below 70%, you also gain that Intimidate for three turns. And then the buff duration is plus one turn. This is also um, going to give you a bonus turn as well. Now, the other thing is that you're using a debuff called Convict, okay? And Convict, let's see if we can pull that up. When the carrier attacks, they take true damage. True damage is 4% of their max HP, and when they take the damage, the caster's AP is plus 10%, and it triggers once per turn. So he's able to do this S3 which basically is going to do true damage to all enemies, and the true damage is 80% of attack plus 100% defense, inflicts the convict for two turns, and each debuff on the target increases the ability's final damage by 10%. And then after attacking, if the target's max HP is below 70%, he then will stun them for a turn. Now, of course, this is just absolutely insane when you have him popping off but then we go and we look at the rezos okay now the rezos for r2 pump fatigue when any teammate inflicts a debuff on the enemy grants the teammate punish evil for one turn half of the punish evil effect is uh going to be granted um or the punish evil effect jincho grants to himself it triggers once per turn and this is when any teammate grants a buff to jincho grants the teammate intimidate for one turn and triggers once per turn now the crazy thing is is that i Obviously, we went over what Punish Evil is. It gives them half of that effect. And then you also get the Intimidate, which is going to give you that healing and shield effect. So now he's able to share these effects with his teammates, okay? Then when you get to R4, when the HP is above 50%, damage is plus 15%. And then to top it all off, at that R6, Pump Fatigue gains Intimidate at the start of combat. And then cast Pump Fatigue, uh, or casting Pump Fatigue does not receive extra Intimidate effects. New effect, Intimidate is immune to stun and sleep. Like, that is just so OP. So, like, even with him at R6, the dude is kind of disgusting. And because he's able to actually share these effects with his teammates, with you being able to get Intimidate right off rip, this means that now you're able to grant that shield, you're able to restore HP, and then on top of that, you're able to be immune to stun and sleep. And you know who that is already going to be heavily affecting? 
my girl Hilda. <laughs> so that's that's a reason why I had to bring him into this because I already know people love counter action or counter options. And I mean, being able to be immune to stun and sleep is pretty huge when we're talking about some of the stronger espers I just mentioned in this top five are stun and sleep espers, right? So that that right there kind of gives you that value, right? And so I feel like at the number you know two slot. Definitely one of my favorite espers um, that I've seen at R6 and I think would work for a lot of players, honestly, I, I have to say. Coming in at, so we went through, and let's let's recap, okay? So we already went over, our first one was T, right? Or number five was T. Number four, we uh, went with um, function, right? Number three, we went with Hilda, and then, of course... Coming in at number two, we had Jin Cho. All right, so now, who is my number one R6? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked, okay? Now, for me personally, this one was actually kind of a toss-up. And, and now, keep in mind, guys, this isn't based off of, like, um, the, you know, any specific positioning. And this is also, guys, I haven't, and I'm purposely not including shimmers because obviously shimmer r 6 yeah. <laughs> so I'm not including them. So if you're wondering why they're not a part of this, I should have said that at the beginning of the video. I was not including or factoring in shimmers because they're going to probably have their own said video. But I have to say between these two right here, okay, Leon and Embla are probably some of my favorites, okay? That, and, and they would fall, and they would honestly take, like, the cake for that 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 last slot, right? Now, the reason why Leon is in here, um, Leon's shielding capability, I think, is by far one of the most broken abilities in the game. Um, and just in terms of how, like, tanky she can make her team, she literally almost does everything but AP pushing. I think that's literally, like, like even once you get her, her, um, her whatchamacallit, her Divinate, her demon allows her to do so much because, again, even though it's only two allies, she's then able to grant immunity, which is just nuts. But basically, what she's able to do, for those of you guys that don't know what Leon does, Leon actually is able to... Um, Actually, I'm lying. She actually does uh, AP push. She pushes back too. Yeah, like this chick does everything. So it, 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 attack down in the S1. Uh, grants recovery on the uh, S1 as well. Um, and then on top of that, the S2 is going to be doing some damage. AP pushing back, granting AP to the uh, target with the lowest HP value. So that's going to be that. But the bread and butter of this character and what I love about her so much is that she has the ability to revive, shield, and heal, okay? And the reason why I like her the most, even over Sally, is because she's a proactive versus a reactive. Uh, or sorry, she's uh, sorry, she's reactive, or am I saying that right? I don't know if I'm saying that right. But either way, she's better than Sally because she doesn't require you to have your allies have to go. It's all based on hit. So I guess that makes it more reactive, right? Yeah. So either way, uh, with that, you gain the dream bubble for two turns and grant all allies defense up and shield for two turns. Shield strength is 60% of Leon's max HP and the shield strength gets a final increase of 10% for the Rezo. Now, dream bubble, when incapacitated, which she can't do, she's immune to all controls. All enemies miss rate is plus 25 percent excuse me 25 percent and she heals the ally when they take a hit healing is 10 percent of leon's max hp and triggers once per uh, target per turn and when the ally falls she revives and heals them healing 50 percent of the max hp and this effect ends immediately gains an extra turn when this effect ends now when you then start looking at rezos okay this is basically for the r2 is where you get that extra turn which fills in the gap for her to be able to go say s3 s2 right now then when you're looking at her r4 when granting shield she gains an additional 30 percent okay that is insane that's to your entire party so that's we're, we're talking about what already because she gives innate in her kit Shield strength is 60% of her max HP, an additional 30%. So now we're sitting at like 90% shield, right? Then, okay, to give her even more value, they decide to, at the start of combat, gains Dream Bubble for two turns. Now, what does that mean? That means that you cannot, like, just nuke anyone and just single target, like, kill. Because what she's going to do is she's going to actually revive and heal them. 
by 50% of their max HP. So it basically makes it to where she is a cleave counter, basically. And because Dream Bubble is being propped so early, this is then going to allow her to be able to then gain an additional turn, which is kind of insane. Like, it's, it's just kind of insane how that, like, skill just works. But when you're actually looking at her at R6, she ends up becoming a absolutely insane, just pure heal, support, shield stacking, like, just unit at R6. Like, she's already good even before then, but I've actually seen and have been able to test her out at R6, and she's absolutely fun. She's absolutely fun. Now, of course, with that, we can't end this off without talking about Embla, okay? Now, Embla, for argument's sake, I think is a lot of our favorites. Embla easily is, and I mean, to be fair with you guys, the Corrupted Seed is like, as you can see, how long this effect is. Just, just from how long it is, just to tell you how good it is. Corrupted Seed is one of my favorite effects in the game. And I like, oh man, like I, I need to get her R6 as soon as I possibly can. Because the thing is, is that when you get her to R2, uh, Dusted Flower, the auto detonation of Corrupted Seed also damages targets other than the carrier. And the damage is 150% of the, t of the caster's attack, which gives you some spread damage there. That's why R2 is such a big push for her. Um, then when you're looking at her R4, when, in at, when at an elemental advantage, damage is plus 15%. And then to top it all off, Desolate Flower Morph 2. This is where things kind of get really crazy for her because each stack of Corrupted Seed grants an attack increase of 60%. Max stacks is reduced to 5. What does this mean? Okay. So max stacks now being reduced to five means that you can proc this a lot quicker. Now, the thing is, is that for each stack, if we actually take a look at her kit, right, each stack is basically going to, so enemies afflicted with Corrupted Seed gain an extra stack when attack. They also gain disease for two turns, and then they will also, um, and that's with a 50% chance, and a debuff will uh, be dispelled from the attacker. Corrupted Seeds will detonate when they are dispelled from the carrier without reaching max stacks. Detonation deals damage and inflicts bleed for two turns, and damage is 35% of Embla's attack per stack. When Corrupted Seeds max reach uh, stacks of eight or the carrier dies, an auto de detonation is triggered, which comes from uh, the R2. And then on top of that, you then get uh, Embla gains 30% AP when uh, Corrupted Seeds are removed. Um, and then on top of that, you have that 150% of uh, Embla's attack coming into play. Um, and that's basically that, right? Now, the thing is, is that when you're looking at one of the main things I'm trying to point out here is that you get 35% of Embla's attack per stack, right? So, Let's actually do this real quick, right? So don't don't mind me. I'm pulling up my calculator because I don't want to think and I want to make sure I'm giving you the exact numbers, right? So 35%. <clears throat> so we got 35% and that's times eight, right? So it's like 280% right? Like 280%. Now, if we go back to the Rezo, right? It's like two, two something like that, right? Now, each stack of Corrupted Seed grants, a, uh, grants attack plus 60%, and the max stacks is reduced to five. Now, keep in mind, it grants a uh, additional, or it grants 60%, right? Now, the thing is, is that when we're looking at what does that 60% times five look like? So 60% times five is 300%, okay? So now you're stacking or adding that value into the equation to allow her to do even more. Now, keep in mind, too, my skill right currently isn't even like max. Like <laughs> it's not even max. So it's not even including what the skill itself does. This is just all corrupted seed. Right. And that's something that's just kind of insane. So basically, once you have this come into play, you're now getting that additional 60% attack value, which is something that is utilized to allow her to be able to help scale how effective this ability is going to be. So when you're looking at like doing any trial-based content, any competitive-based content, th this character is insane for scaling damage. Like she's just, it's just absolutely insane. And the fact that everybody can take a, to, you know, apply or be applicable to adding the debuff effect, whether it be the disease or, um, you know, the bleeds going to affect, like, it's just insane. That's all just based off of them purely hitting a target with the corrupted C. So she is definitely 
easily one of my favorite damage dealers and by far one of the strong that's why even having her on banner with like uh fumasuki and gaius uh her and gaius are up there but i definitely would say embla is just like dude like long term she gives you some insane scaling for your damage. Like, she just gives you some insane scaling. Now, obviously, this is where debuffs can be applied. Um, and, of course, Corrupt Deceit can be removed. But I feel like, nonetheless, when I'm looking at my overall five that I just was like, dude, I got to build these es- these espers, she definitely falls into it. So that's going to be my top five, honestly. These are some of my personal favorites. I'm intrigued to know who you guys' top five are. I feel like it does vary. This is based off of my personal experience and what I've really liked within the game, but it could be very different for some of you guys because everybody's accounts start off very differently. Some people have gotten other R6s, um, you know, a lot sooner than others and or have tried out different compositions. So I'm intrigued to know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. And yeah, that'll be that. So I hope to see you guys on the next video. Everybody be safe out there and I'll catch you guys in the next one.